Ever found yourself kind of wrestling with this whole idea of forgiveness? You know, especially when it comes to those closest to you. Yeah, it's a tough one. Today, we're going deep on that struggle. Unpacking the whole John MacArthur and Steve Lawson situation. Right, right. Plus, we're going to look at some of those controversies surrounding MacArthur himself. Okay, sounds good. Sometimes the vessel falters, crumbling in his hands But the potter never gives up, he has a perfect plan He reshapes the broken pieces, with patience and with skill And what was once discarded, now reflects his perfect will On the We've got a recent YouTube discussion with John Piper to dig into. Okay. And uh, some criticisms and analysis from different sources too. So we're really diving into the thick of it this time. It's a fascinating landscape we're navigating here, wouldn't you say? This intersection of personal experience, theological convictions, and of course the ever-present court of public opinion. It's a lot to untangle, but for our listener, it seems like really getting MacArthur's take on forgiveness, you know, with all this going on, that's key. Absolutely. So let's jump right into this YouTube video. Okay. MacArthur doesn't exactly mince words, does he? No, not really. He talks about betrayal, like it's almost, I don't know, unavoidable part of life. Yeah, he does. He even compares it to what Jesus and Paul went through. The very, hmm almost stoic approach don't you think yeah like he's saying listen this is gonna happen you gotta persevere keep loving even when it hurts and he seems to draw strength from that idea that even jesus and paul those pillars of faith experienced such deep betrayal and he quotes paul right all those in asia have deserted me yeah i remember that can you imagine that feeling that abandonment especially after everything paul did for the early church it makes you wonder doesn't it if MacArthur sees suffering, maybe even betrayal, as just part and parcel of faith. It's a heavy thought, for sure. It is. But he doesn't just leave it at enduring betrayal. No, he goes further, right. He delves into reconciliation, too. Yeah, yeah. He tells that story, a powerful one, about reconnecting with this guy who basically caused a major rift in his church. Oh, right, you're right. This guy he worked closely with who, in MacArthur's words, really devastated the church. Yeah. But years later, they reconcile. MacArthur even goes to the man's funeral, finds peace in knowing they'll be, quote, in heaven together. Now that's powerful. Yeah. Speaks volumes, that anecdote. Right. You really get a sense of how deeply MacArthur believes in reconciliation. It's not just theoretical for him, is it? He's lived it. Yeah, it. Yeah. Even with all the pain. Okay. But here's where things get a little more, well, complicated. Oh. Because we have this message of forgiveness. Mm. Powerful story, right? Yeah. But at the same time, we have these allegations against MacArthur and Grace Community Church. Oh, right. About how they've handled those sexual abuse cases. Exactly. Some sources are suggesting they've prioritized reconciliation, maybe even at the expense of the victors themselves. That's a tough one, no doubt. Yeah. It really highlights the tension, doesn't it? <laughs> Between forgiveness, this beautiful ideal, and the very real need for justice, for accountability. And how do you balance those two? Especially when someone's been deeply hurt. Right. Is forgiveness even appropriate in those situations? Mm. Or does it just do more harm? We'll need to unpack that. It's like we're trying to untangle, I don't know, a fishing line after a shark got through it. Forgiveness, accountability, hypocrisy. It's messy, that's for sure. And the tough part is, there aren't always easy answers. Especially when you're dealing with something as personal, as nuanced as forgiveness. Right. It's easy to talk about in general terms, but then you get into the nitty gritty, the messy reality of it all. Exactly. And suddenly it, those lines get really blurry. It's like that saying, everyone wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Uh -huh. Yeah. Forgiving, reconciling, it sounds beautiful, but when there's real pain, real consequences. Totally a different story. You're hitting on something really important there. Yeah. And that's where this blunt Calvinist source really adds to our deep dive today oh yeah yeah now whether you agree with their whole take or not they make a valid point forgiveness it shouldn't be a free pass okay i can see that true forgiveness the kind that actually leads to healing that takes more than just words it takes action i like that they even use the word erased talking about steve lawson right like he just kind of vanished from the conversation no one really addressed what he did and that's where this whole hypocrisy thing comes back right it's almost like 
Okay, so on one hand, you have MacArthur calling for forgiveness for Lawson, which, okay, on its face, that's yeah. a good thing, right? Sure. But we don't know the details, do we? What's he being forgiven for? Is he even asking for it? Exactly. And without that, it rings hollow. It yeah. feels like an attempt to just move on, but not actually deal with what happened. Like saying, I forgive you, B.U.T., and then listing every single thing you did wrong. Uh-huh, exactly. That's not real forgiveness, is it? No, that's just sweeping it under the rug, which, let's be honest, brings us straight back to those allegations against MacArthur's own church. Right, right. I mean, if these allegations are true, that's a pretty big disconnect, isn't it, between preaching forgiveness and oh. how it's actually practiced. Absolutely. It raises questions. Does what he's saying actually line up with what he's doing? It makes it hard to take him seriously, at least for some people, I'd imagine. For sure. And it undermines the whole message, doesn't it? It hmm. creates this sense of, like, distrust. Yeah. So, where does that leave us? We went looking for answers about forgiveness and walked straight into, what, a theological minefield. Uh-huh. Something like that. <laughs> but honestly that's what makes these deep dives so interesting it forces us to face these tough questions challenges us to examine our own beliefs about forgiveness about accountability about and, grace and maybe realize that sometimes there isn't a clear-cut answer exactly it's not black and white and maybe the most important thing we can do is just sit with that discomfort yeah you mentioned earlier forgiveness being a tool. Oh, right. That really stuck with me. Like, it can be used for good or for bad. Absolutely. Forgiveness, at its core, it's powerful. Mm -hmm. It can break down walls. It can heal. It can mend relationships. But like any tool, it can be misused. Yeah, to silence people, to excuse bad behavior. And that's why it's so important to approach forgiveness thoughtfully mm -hmm. with discernment. Not just can I forgive, but should I forgive? What needs to happen for this to actually heal? You've got it. Yeah. It's not enough to just say the words. You have to examine the situation, think about everyone's motives, make sure forgiveness is something that's both wanted and offered in a way that actually leads to healing. I feel like we've untangled more thoughts than a yarn store after a cat convention. But seriously though, this idea of forgiveness not being a finish line it's a process. It is. It's a journey, really. Yeah. And like with any journey, there are going to be some detours, some wrong turns, you know, moments of aha and moments of, wait, what? Exactly. You never know quite what's around the bend. So where does that leave our listener? We started this whole deep dive wanting to understand where MacArthur lands on forgiveness. Right. But we've kind of unearthed this whole, I don't know, network of complications along the way. And maybe that's the biggest takeaway, that there isn't some simple one-size-fits-all answer. We've talked about that tension between forgiving and holding someone accountable. How stoicism can sometimes mask deeper struggles. Yeah. The danger of making forgiveness this ideal mm. without acknowledging the work it takes to get there. The messiness of it all. Exactly. And these are questions that each of us individually in our own communities, we have to grapple with. There's no easy answer. You're right. Context is everything. Absolutely. We can't just look at a soundbite or a single situation and say, well, this is what it means. Yep. We've got to think about the nuances, the power dynamics at play. Is someone being hurt? All of it. I think as we try to sort through these tough issues, the most important thing is approaching it all with humility. Yeah. Being willing to listen, to learn, and to admit that we don't have it all figured out. Even when it comes to something like forgiveness, it's a journey, not a destination. So maybe for our listener, the biggest takeaway isn't an answer, but more questions. That's a good way to put it. Like what does forgiveness really mean? Why is accountability so important? How do we balance grace and justice in a world that seems to want everything tied up in a neat little bow? And maybe, just maybe, those questions are a good place to start. Because sometimes the most transformative journeys, they don't begin with having all the answers. You said it. They start with the courage to ask tough questions, to sit in that uncomfortable space of not knowing, and to be open to the idea that we still have a lot to learn and unlearn along the way. If this deep dive has sparked some of that reflection, I think we've done something right. I'd say so too. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for this deep dive, everyone. We'll leave you with this. The next time you find yourself facing that complicated thing called forgiveness, remember, it's not about finding the right answer. It's about engaging in that process. Of seeking truth, okay. of healing, of making things whole again. In the hands of the potter, with a clay soft and new, a vessel takes its shape with every turn and view, each crease and every line. More
hold it by his grace Though the process may be painful He's forming something great On the potter's wheel we are spinning round and round and round Through the fire and the pressure Until we're heaven bound Every crack and every flaw He'll mend with tender care For the potter's hands are faithful And his love is always there Sometimes the vessel falters, crumbling in his hands But the potter never gives up, he has a perfect plan He reshapes the broken pieces, with patience and with skill And what was once discarded, now reflects his perfect will On the potter's wheel, we're spinning round and round and round Through the fire and the pressure, until we're heaven bound He'll mend with tender care For the potter's hands are faithful And his love is always there When you feel like you're shattered And your strength is wearing thin Remember you're in the hands Of the one who'll shape you from within He'll refine you in the furnace He'll mold you through the strife And when the work is finished He'll be a vessel full of life 